This problem starts off looking a little bit scary, because we're given this formula for the electric field, and it has three components to it. An I component, a J component, and a K component. But right off the bat, we can make this problem much less scary and look a little easier by recognizing that because this is a problem where we want to analyze flux, two components of this vector can be ignored because they don't actually contribute anything to the net electric flux through this Gaussian surface. And those terms are the constant terms. Take this I component, for example, which points along the x-axis. It's a negative term in the i-hat direction, which means it's traveling through the cube in this kind of direction. But because the term is constant, nothing about the magnitude of the electric field is going to be changing along that component. But remember that in order for there to be a net flux, there needs to be more coming out than there is coming in, or less, or more coming in than there is coming out. If the same amount of field is entering as it is exiting, then there is no net flux. Because the negative 3i component is a constant term, then the same amount of field that enters from that component is the same amount of field that exits. So there is no contribution to the flux from either of the constant terms. The same logic applies to the 3k. So the only term of this electric field equation that we're going to focus on is the negative 4y squared, which has the j hat, meaning it's pointing in the y direction. That term's not constant because it's being multiplied by the square of the current y coordinate. So that term is changing, which means it's totally possible for that term to have uh, more field coming in than coming out, or vice versa, which means there could be a contribution to flux there. So if we're only worried about the field that points in the y direction, then we're only worried about the field that passes through the left and right faces. So let's first write a formula for the electric flux that passes through the right face. Remember that flux is equal to the magnitude of the electric field multiplied by the area of the surface it's passing through. So according to the formula we're given, the electric field E is equal to negative 4y squared. So that's negative 4 times the square of y, so the y position of this face, which is just what y1 is, and the problem gives us y1 as 4 meters. So 4 meters. But it's squared, because y is squared. And then, according to the electric flux formula, this is then multiplied by the surface area of the face. And since the problem tells us that the edge length of the cube is 2 meters, that means that the area of the face is the square of that, and 2 squared is 4. This area is also going to be written as positive, because the normal to this surface area points in the positive y direction. So if we put this into a calculator, negative 4 times 4 squared times 4, we get a value of negative, negative 256 newton meters per coulomb squared. So that is the electric flux through the right face. Now let's find the electric flux through the left face. So the electric flux through the left face. It's going to be the same formula, the electric field, multiplied by the surface area. So the electric field is again negative 4 times y squared, but this time the y value is different because the left face, we can see, is at a different point on the y-axis. Since we know that the right face was located at y equals 4 meters, and we know that the edge length of the cube is 2 meters, that means that the left face has to be 2 meters down from 4. So it has to be located at 2 meters. So negative 4 times the square of 2 meters, 2 squared, then times the area, which again the area is four, has a magnitude of 4 meters squared, but now on the left face the normal to the area is pointing in the negative y direction. So the area here is actually going to be negative 4. So the negatives will actually cancel out, and we should expect to have a positive result for the leftward flux. 
And sure enough, if we put this into a calculator, we get a flux of 64 Newton meters per coulomb squared. So to find the total flux through this cube, we just add the two values together. Negative 256 plus 64. And doing so gives us a total flux of negative 192 Newton meters per coulomb squared. So that is the total flux through the Gaussian surface. Now the problem's asking for the enclosed charge within the Gaussian surface. So to find this, we'll just apply Gauss's law. And Gauss's law states that the enclosed charge within a Gaussian surface is equal to the electric constant multiplied by the net electric flux through that surface. So the electric constant has a value of 8.85 times 10 to the power of negative 12 coulomb squared per newton meter squared. And you multiply by the flux we just found of negative 192. So we put this into a calculator and we find a magnitude, we find a value for the enclosed charge of negative 1.7 times 10 to the power of negative 9 coulombs. So that is the charge enclosed within the sphere, or within the, the, the cube, and that is the answer to this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing, as that'll help me out in making more videos just like this. And if you have a request or a question, leave a comment down below. Hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.